though he is sitting down, we are all quite rightly dwarfed by this great man, not just because of his towering height or indeed his incredible presence, but because of his contribution to Manx culture and Manx musical life over many decades. John Kaneen is the quiet and knowledgeable voice of Manx Radio's folk show, but he is also a superbly talented and larger than life musician, singer and dancer, and the very worthy recipient of this year's RBV Cultural Award, the Rye Bleener Vananen. I don't feel, looking at all the names on this amazing prize, is it? Trophy? That I deserve it, really. <laughs> but there is an old Manx proverb that I collected once from an old man who said to me, take the money and run. <laughs> As I say, I must confess I feel a bit of a sham looking at these names on the trophy. My contribution to Manx culture is, I don't feel a lot compared to the enjoyment that I have got from it. We can talk about him defying categorization. I think we can all agree on that. His musical and dancing prowess has put him at the centre of social gatherings, charity events and festivals for decades. I was born and raised in the Isle of Man. We were taught Manx dancing at primary school. It was the relatively short-lived skiffle craze from 1954 to 58 that set me on the course of traditional American music at that time. Every kid had a cheap guitar and sang songs with just three chords. You could get away with it then. It was around that time that I met David Collister over here and uh, now he's one of my oldest friends too. And we performed together as a duo in the style of Robin Hall and Jimmy McGregor. Then, in the late 50s, we formed the Manx Ballads and Blues Club, which met weekly at the Oban Hotel on Loch Promenade, which belonged to David's uh, wife Anne's father. One of the members of the Ballads and Blues Club was Stuart Slack, who was just beginning to write his Manx songs. Eventually, the Skifflers went their separate ways, some to rock and roll, and the slogan, drugs, sex, and rock and roll. Others, like me, took a more serious interest in traditional music and song from both sides of the Atlantic. We had the slogan, sex, beer, and sausage rolls. <laughs> John was not always centre stage, though. He quietly and professionally recorded concerts, sessions, and other gatherings for posterity. And as part of his folk show, and this is really important, John encouraged young and new groups to record a session of their songs and tunes with him for broadcast. And this is a really important part of encouraging and motivating the next generation. The show itself is enjoyed around the world, with listeners commenting on his encyclopedic knowledge. Back in the mid-1970s, Manx Radio was just over 10 years old. David Collister was presenting a classical music program, country music program, folk program, and a three-hour magazine program on a Sunday afternoon. He was virtually Mr. Manx Radio. And it was about 1979, I suppose, he asked me to take over the folk program, and I've presented it ever since. John also worked with the late Colin Jerry to put together and edit a collection entitled A Garland for John Clegg, a new book of old songs. This book reflected John's extensive knowledge of British folk song collections and the connections between songs and tune titles within that wider context. Whereas Colin and others worked to promote songs in Manx, John's focus was, and is, on English language ballads and songs, and he has done much to promote them here and through his international contacts. Colin Jerry's two influential books, Cureland 1 and 2, were published in 1979. I found them interesting from, from the point of view of identifying English language songs in the late 19th century repertoire of Manx people. 
Together, Colin and I produced the song Mook a Garland for John Clegg, in which songs in English were on the left-hand side of the page and Colin's singable Manx versions were on the opposite. It seems to be that the English language songs in the Kiolente books have been rather neglected. For example, there's a song with the title The Pick on My Shoulder, which was collected from Charles Clegg, who was the coachman of Dr. John Clegg in Castletown. <clears throat> and Mona Douglas also collected a version of it from Peel. The tune is the same as that used for the Irish song, The Boys of Wexford. We are the boys of Wexford. And it's, that was written by Arthur Darley during the rebellion of 1798. There are no words with the Manx tune, but the song can be identified by changing one letter of the title. Instead of the word pick, the pick on my shoulder, we replace it with an A, which gives us the title, the pack on my shoulder. And that is the title of a song not uncommon in Australia or Ireland, where the cor chorus is, with my pack upon my shoulder and a blackthorn in my hand, I'll travel the bush of Australia like a true-born Irishman. A mighty box player and singer, he featured on the Manx dance cassette for Rinka Vannon in 1986 and was awarded honorary membership of the Manx Folk Dance Society for musical services. The Caligas Kelly Band came into existence in 1985, with its members being Michael Neal, Bob Carswell, who? <laughs> Sharon Corlett, John Corlett, and myself. Is that right, Robert? Ooh, 1979, actually. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> was it really? Mm, it was. Oh, well. Oh, well, uh, anyway, the, over the, our existence, we must have called... Uh, for dancers on most, or we must have called rather on most Manx musicians to sit in with the band on some time or other. And we must have called and played for dancers in most of the, uh, uh, the, the hospices in the Isle of Man. Generally, things went very well and we had a lot of fun, except, of course, for that wedding in Mount Murray, when there seemed to have been some sort of bus stop between the two families, and no one would get up to dance. <laughs> so after half an hour, we left it to the disco and bailed out. You will all have seen that Hunt the Wren, just before, well, just in 2018, just after Christmas, um, saw terrific numbers. And John is one of the people who must be thanked for this revival of interest together with Fiona McArdle, who we are also delighted is here. He's been the backbone of the Douglas Hunt the Wren for long years, raising money for charities, including the RNLI. One reason to accept the RBEV is my achievement in persuading people, I think, to come out on Tinwald Fairfield on Boxing Day afternoon and hit each other with sticks. <laughs> they call it CAMAG, but I think it's uh, really an opportunity to settle scores <laughs> from the past year. And who else to become Mananan, our mythical sea guard? In the early 1980s, fitted out in full-length cloak and headdress, and there was a wonderful photo on the table here, the towering figure of Big John became Mananan, captured so beautifully in that photograph with the rather more diminutive festival founder, Mona Douglas. I know how she feels. <laughs> in 2008, and Crinich recreated the scene, with John again prepared to take on the role on the proviso that no one set him on fire. <laughs> Those nominating John, and um, thank you so much for coming, so many of you, spoke of his generosity of spirit in sharing his knowledge and musicianship with groups and individuals his unique blend of knowledge, skills and accomplishments that he brings to music and the history of song and dance of the Isle of Man. And summed up his modesty by saying, 
Although huge in person and character, John Canine is a modest type of chap, and I would doubt that he would seek to be awarded anything. My cousin Brian was assistant professor of German and linguistics at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver, Canada, but he was also interested in Celtic languages. Upon his death in January 2012, he left half a million Canadian dollars to Esperantic Studies Foundation. He was very keen on the Esperanto and a similar amount to the then Heritage Foundation, soon to become Colchavanin. A major part of Brian's bequest was used to fulfill an object of the Manx Heritage Foundation Act of 1982, which was to establish a center for the promotion and encouragement of interest in and study of the island's cultural heritage. So while my name may be on the RBV award, I, within myself, will be sharing it in the honor of my late cousin, Brian Douglas Canine. The Rye Bleen of Vananin is the Isle of Man's highest cultural honor, awarded by Culture Vanin through a panel made up of representatives from the charity and from Isle of Man Arts Council, Manx National Heritage, and Crunyacht and Ncheja Gilgach. I will now call upon the Kerliach of Culture Vanin, Chris Thomas, to present the medal and check, as well as donations to John's nominated charities, to John Canine RBV. <laughs> <laughs> 